the next step is the uh, selection of structural system or actually uh, checking whether the structural system which you have intended initially for your building uh, is uh, permitted or not permitted by the code in your seismic design category right so you will go to table 12.2-1 in ASC 7-16 and you will check whether the structural system which you want to uh, construct for your structure or building is permitted by uh, the building code in that particular seismic design category or not right so let me directly go to that table and that will be uh, directly understandable this is table 12.2-1 uh, and uh, in this uh, you can see a list of different seismic force resisting systems bearing wall systems and different types of that building frame systems and different types of that and then next uh, moment resisting frames and then dual systems and then finally some other systems so there is a detailed list of structural systems in the first column in the last column uh, this is the seismic design category b c d e and f and uh, in different categories there are different symbols nl means no limit no limit and np means uh, not permitted not permitted right and sometimes there is a number like 160 160 and that is the height limit uh, up to which this structural system is permitted and beyond which this system will not be permitted for example let me give one example check this uh, in bearing wall systems check this number 16 uh, light frame cold form steel walls uh, and it have the wood structural panels this particular system uh, have no limit of height in the seismic design categories b and c so this is seismic design category b this is c so which means that there is no limit of height uh, in these two sdcs but there is a height limit of 65 feet height is in feet in this particular table uh, for the seismic design category d e and f right so depending upon your seismic design category you will come to know from this table that a particular structural system is uh, permitted or not or whether it is permitted up to a certain height or whether it is permitted for any height no limit means uh, it is permitted for all heights right so let me give you a few examples for concrete special moment resisting frames moment resisting frames have different types uh, based on the ductility requirements which you can uh, satisfy to ensure the confinement and the resulting ductility of your concrete element so depending upon those uh, ductility requirements uh, you can either design your concrete element as a special moment resisting frame element or an intermediate IMRF or ordinary moment resisting frame. So obviously for special moment resisting frame the ductility requirements and confinement requirements detailing requirements will be very strict. So if you follow all those requirements uh, your element is, uh, is entitled to be declared as the special moment resisting frame so and but obviously the design of smrfs will require more expertise and it may require an understanding of the nonlinear behavior of uh, the element also so uh, for concrete special moment resisting frames which is the c5 in that table it has no uh, it, it, let, let's directly go to that concrete special moment resisting frame c5 in that table so this is a bearing wall system building frame system and then c is the moment resisting frame and in that c5 this one special moment resisting frame although it is very small but let me try to explain that so let me go in that particular row this row and it has no limit in the seismic design category B and no limit in 
D, uh, C, D, E and F which means this is a structural system which can be designed for any height in all the seismic design categories. Since it is a very ductile system, uh, therefore it has no height limit. But at the same time, if you go for this C6 intermediate reinforced concrete moment frames, uh, a structural system which may not follow those strict requirements of detailing and ductility, for that, for seismic design category B and C, there is no limit. But for D, E and F, it is not permitted. So it is not permitted at all. So if you are in seismic design category D, for example, this is the column for D, then you cannot use the intermediate reinforced concrete moment frame as your structural system, right? So if your risk category and your site class and your hazard parameters are such that you finally end up in the seismic design category D, you cannot use IMRF, right? But if you are in seismic design category B or C, then you can use the uh, intermediate reinforced concrete moment frames. The next row is the ordinary reinforced concrete frames. And in that, there is no limit in the seismic design category B. But beyond B, C, D, E and F, it is not permitted. So even in seismic design category C, it is not permitted. This is the column for C. It is not permitted OMRF or ordinary moment resisting frame for concrete is not permitted in even the seismic design category C, right? So similarly, you can keep on reading that table and get a lot of insight. In general, the more ductile a structural system inherently is, uh, it is allowed for more height or it is allowed for uh, more severe seismic design categories. SMRF is very ductile structural system. It has no limit for all SDCs. So it can be uh, used for all seismic design categories. But for IMRF or OMRF, in some seismic design categories, it is, it is not permitted, right? But in uh, B or C, maybe it has no limit, which means it is permitted. Similarly, another example, steel special truss moment resisting frames, C2. It has no limit for seismic design category B and C. For seismic design category D, it has a limit of 160 feet, right? around 16 story building for an average 10 feet per story. So for around 16, 15, 16 story building, uh, if it is in seismic design category D, we can use this structural system. For seismic design category E, the limit is reduced now, 100 feet. So only around 10 story building. For seismic design category F, it is not permitted at all, right? So you cannot use this system in SDCF, right? So step five in uh, short is that you check whether the structural system you intended for your building is permitted by the building code, uh, depending upon the height of the, uh, the building and uh, depending upon uh, the seismic design category of the building. Many of the uh, seismic design or analysis provisions, uh, which are generally applicable to more severe seismic design categories, they are not applicable to seismic design category A, right? So uh, time is short, otherwise I would have directly shown you those provisions, special provisions for seismic design category A. But in short, the summary is that uh, uh, the SDCA is not subjected to several of the several of the requirements prescribed for the uh, other seismic design categories.